Could the sound at your church use some improvement? Introducing Soundtech and PA training for churches from Muse Academy and SFL Group. A comprehensive four DVD training course for live church audio, incorporating all the essential sound tech skills, including mixing, instrument miking, system setup, and buildings acoustics. We've designed the course for three groups of people. Sound techs looking to develop their PA knowledge and mixing skills. A little bit more electric guitar. There's a solo instrument, which is clearly heard. It's really replacing the vocal. Churches wanting to better understand their own sound system's needs, whether that be upgrading, designing a new system from scratch, or simply to get the best out of your existing PA. So as you'll see on screen, actually the most important part of our sound system and the element that has actually gives us the best possible sound quality, it's not a piece of equipment, it's the venue itself. And lastly, it's for anyone looking to address typical audio issues in church, including working with challenging buildings acoustics, feedback problems, and combating volume and loudness issues. But in live situations, there's an awful lot of cymbal sound all over the stage, and it's likely to be already being picked up by the vocal microphones. Often, I will do even quite large gigs with the drum overheads turned right down. Each section is broken down into bite-sized step-by-step lessons that you can access as a full learning program or dip into as you need, including setting up your system, so plugging it all in. So far, I've spoken a lot about microphones, but what happens if you've got an acoustic guitar, for example, that you're trying to get into the PA? Testing and how to troubleshoot when something goes wrong. Make sure the volume on the instrument is three quarters to full before you start to attenuate on the DI box. If the signal's too strong, at three quarters to full, then use the pad. And of course, what equipment to prioritise when buying new gear? Moving up the hierarchy of importance, the next least most important thing is the microphones. Then we look at the whole subject of instrument miking techniques, including spoken word vocals. The problem that I see so many times is that people might tilt the mic um, so that it points straight up. You end up talking over the top of the capsule and the sound quality is compromised as a result sung vocals for lead, background and choirs. In this case, we're going to adopt uh, a system of distance miking where we try and use one microphone to pick up a group of vocalists. Acoustic guitars, electric guitar and bass amps, keyboards and upright and grand pianos. If you are going to use an upright piano, I would mic it in a very similar way to a grand piano. A single mic placed at the back of the piano towards the higher register, the right-hand end of the keyboard. Then orchestral instruments, including strings, brass and woodwind. Drums and percussion. Now, as you can see, I've gone about a hand's width apart. Also, he's playing across the mic rather than into it. Plus microphone technique and a guide to different types of wired and wireless microphones. Then we explore speaker systems, from how speakers work. And the speaker will speak through that horn. And this acts as an acoustic lens which focuses sound energy in a certain direction to understanding and choosing the right system for your church to the science of where to place your speakers to get the best results. In fact, if you do want to tilt your speakers down slightly, I would suggest no more than 5 or 10 degrees and this will then take a little bit of energy off of the ceiling. A core element of the course is the art of mixing skills and we cover what all the controls in the desk do how to EQ your instruments and vocals to help them sit right in the mix. Select a frequency between 400 and 1 kilohertz. This is kind of a low mid frequency and we're going to scoop a lot of that out as well. We've now started to make something which is very thin sounding, is exactly where we want the hi-hat to be. How to use compressors and gates to increase control and clarity. The objective for compression is to make sure that during program, we're running somewhere between six, a maximum of nine dB of gain reduction. And many more expert techniques to help you create great mixes. We even explore professional approaches for mixing fallback monitors, eliminating feedback. If we were to angle it flat, now the monitor is at an angle where the microphone is partially sensitive and we're more likely to receive feedback. And running sound checks from the desk. Number one, PFL the channel. Number two, Fader to minus five and unmute. Number three, 
spin the gain in to an appropriate listening level. We also cover buildings acoustics and look at how to work with echoey buildings. Finally, we'll hear from Holy Trinity Brompton, St Paul's Onslow Square in London. This is the reverb tale in this traditional building. And some practical ideas for buildings acoustics treatments for your church. So the back wall is a very important surface to treat when we're considering acoustics. And finally, there's a big section we called It's Too Loud, What Can I Do? where we explore managing musicians' stage noise levels, setting sound pressure levels. Let's take a sound pressure reference of where we're at. Wait for the vocals. And some great tips on overcoming typical loudness problems. All in all, over nine hours of content on four DVDs. So if you want to radically improve your sound at church, get the Soundtech and PA Training for Churches DVD set from Music Academy and SFL.